Hello, how are you? I am back. I, I'm sorry, I was running a few minutes late. I had to put my face on. You know, I don't like to scare small children. Hello, everybody. Who is here? We've got Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl might be coming back in. She had a customer fitting. She must make clothing, too. How cool. And then Marsha's here. Hello, Marsha. Bonnie, I know. Can you believe it's August? I mean, somehow we missed a whole few months in time, didn't we? So, Bonnie and Jody's here. Hello, Jody and Sherry's here. Hello. Oh, thank goodness your storm is finished, hon. And hi, Susan. Susan, you're never late. You're always right on time. So, it is so good to see all of you. Teresa Djukovic, hello. Is Kathy Klein here too? Hello, Kathy. I hope it's a beautiful day for you. We're waiting to see what I see. I see. I. I ECI, ACA, <laughs> I practiced saying that storm, and here I can't do it. So, you know, I-S-A-I-S, -S, okay? I'll have to just spell it. <laughs> but I practiced it. I really wanted to get it right for you guys. But anyway, but it's, it's a beautiful pronunciation. It's just... My sieve of a senior brain couldn't hold on to it long enough. So, hello, everybody. Annette is here, too. Hello. Oh, this is great. You Oh, so Susan has been hand-stitching up a storm. That's wonderful. Diane57 is here. Hello, darling. How are you? I, it is so good to see all of you. There is Polly. Oh, I can't wait till this COVID gets better in our area. Because Polly will tell you, it, we're still having a pretty high, a rough time of it, sadly. And um, But when this is over, I want to sew with Polly. I just think that we'd have a good time sewing. Oh, okay. Thank you, Susan. I But I, I looked up the pronunciation, and I tried very hard to remember it, and I couldn't quite remember it. So, anyway, it is so good to see all of you. Luckily, this that hurricane is now a tropical storm, so we're not too worried. But, uh, oh, did Bonnie have a new picture of her tulip? I would, Bonnie is doing beautiful um, yeah, applique, and her and Susan are working on a hand embroidery project, like a red work type deal, and oh, I've started my, that's why I was a little bit late. I got so excited about starting those houses, and I always think, I've got 15 minutes. I have time to get all that done. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> So, uh, Marsha got you a new machine. That's wonderful, sweetie. Yay. Good for you. Good for you. And don't forget, anything you work on, I want your pictures. I downloaded a bunch of pictures today and updated your folders. And I've got some new pictures of little Russell. And simple yet elegant with applique. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds really nice. And I love your photos. In fact, I get so many photos. Um, Diana is, Diana Wright is prolific. And so I actually, in her, in her folder, I made separate folders. One for cooking, one for her new pool they're having put in, and one for her quilting. That way we can see it all. So, I am back, and I'm so happy to be back. Let me tell you, and I can now tell you just a little bit, but I was having to go another round with the X, and it's been 16 years. Come on. I think we're done. And uh, But luckily, I hired the same lawyer again who... who executed the property settlement 
and was there with me for the divorce. And she's wonderful. If you're in Southern Maryland and you need a dynamite lawyer, Sue Ann Armitage is your person. And she's so smart and so tough and clear-sighted and she was wonderful. So now I'm taken care of with my health care. You know, as we get older, ladies, we have to protect our rights. And, you know, when you are married 29 years, they owe you something, especially if they were the ones that were bad. And, you know, you have to fight for what's yours and fight for your future health because I needed my health insurance. So anyway... Um, but I'm back, and we were very safe. We stayed in a wonderful hotel. If you're ever in Southern Maryland, it's the Holiday Inn Solomon's Conference Center. It was lovely, and we were so careful because I, all I've done since this COVID hit was occasionally go to an ATM or just go on a drive just to get out just a little bit, but have no contact with anyone. It was scary leaving the house. When we got in the car, we had everything packed up. We had our mask. We had a hand sanitizer. We had rubber gloves. We, I mean, we, we had stuff to clean the hotel room, Lysol disinfectant spray. I mean, we packed everything. And um, we even packed uh, tissue paper, if you know what I mean, because I said, I'm not stopping at a rest stop. I can just stop at some little field off the drive. And that's what we did. And when we got there, we sanitized the room down. And every time, boy, oh, we didn't go out of the room without our hand sanitizer and our masks on. Can't wait to show you my mask that I've been working on. So, and are you ready for this? When I got back from my trip, I had my first tomatoes. Only the cherry ones have ripened. But, oh my gosh, I... Well, I'll take whatever kind of tomato I can get. So, pardon me. I know I should share. If I'm going to eat in front of you, I should share. <laughs> mm. The first one I ate was still warm from the sun. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. No chocolate tastes as good as a sun-warmed tomato. That's my opinion. My opinion only, but I'll stick with it. <laughs> so, yeah, we were prepared. We carried all of our own food and drinks. We did not want to take any chances. So, but it was nice to get away and have a couple days just to relax. But everything's good. I'm back home. And I want to tell you that with the reducing the stress being reduced now in my life. My creativity, I can feel it coming back. The last couple months has been really hard for me trying to deal with all of this. I don't like fighting of any type. And, um, but when you need it, hire the best lawyer you can afford. It is worth it. And especially if you get the legal fees back. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Well, I bought, I bought just a couple little things. I'm on a budget after cutting that tree down. That was, you know, we've had a couple hits to the budget. Pardon me just a moment. I dropped the beads. Okay. I'll have, but I did. I, I'm a good girl, but I'm not a saint. So, but I'm being careful. I'm being careful. But, you know, my favorite pineapple fabrics... You know, in fact, I just realized, oh, who, fight, oh, fighting, it takes everything out of me. You know what, Diana, you and I understand, um, fighting is too much like my childhood, and I, it drains me. It takes everything out of me, so I get too depressed. So, before I left, I happened to see... If you aren't signed up for the Pineapple Fabrics newsletter, why not? <laughs> sales that are just amazing. In fact, I've got such good news about sales and stuff today. 
But before I left, you know that my heart is to is in doing a space series in honor of my Mark, because he loves everything to do with outer space. And so I saw this fabric on pineapple fabrics for four ninety nine a yard. Well, hello. <laughs> so I got two yards of this. <coughs> Pardon me, that tomato made me choke. Um, this is Marblehead by Roe Gregg for Paintbrush Studios. And this one was called Black Something. Um, but the colors are really cool. And uh, Marblehead by Roe Gregg for Paintbrush Studios. Okay? So anyway, Mark and I both went, oh, this is going to make some great backgrounds for some of my space things. So I got two yards, and that's all I got. Isn't that good? See? It's kind of like trying to be on a diet. You don't give up food altogether. You just cut down your portions. <laughs> so I got two yards of that. Thank you, Pineapple Fabrics. I love it. And in fact, I realized I've still got... I got a new thank you to somebody, got a new um, gift certificate, and I've got my one of my birthday certificates. So as soon as they have something that really catches my attention, that will be so special. So when I was away, boy, this did come early. When I was away, Joanne Fabrics had... You know how you wait. You know, first they put out a, a price. Nah, nah, not quite good enough. Then they put out another price. Then two weeks later, they'll have another sale. And then all of a sudden, they'll send you an email with free shipping. <laughs> and that just puts you over the edge. Well, as I've been telling you, I've been wanting to refresh. Like, I need a necklace to go with this color blue. So I've been shopping their sales. And when the strand of beads, like when I know this was probably a, a dollar forty for this. So I got two of them. And this might have been three dollars. And it's this whole sack of those beautiful. They're called seed beads, but they're kind of like a shattered glass bead. They're so pretty. And look at this. Isn't that pretty? And they've got bronze, gold, and silver. And this was $3 for all these. And then this, I think, was 2 something or $3.00. And these are the abal no is it abalone type shells, and they are so pretty. And then these stones, and that you get so many with that. And they they were two something, I think. So, and let me show you what I got before. So this was the last sale that was probably a month and a half ago. And I wanted some beads that would go with multiple colors. But I realized when I got them, I needed one more strand. So these were, I think, 180 each. And then I got this last time. It was like $3 each. But, you know, I wear a lot of colors like this. And then I wanted to get some of the blues, the turquoise blues. So now... I have got enough to get busy making some bracelets and some necklaces. And like this, these beads would be so pretty with what I have on now. So anyway, but it's exciting. So this is all I spent. And, and all together this time. Oh, 
And I got these two, I don't know why, they were $1.49, but I got these for my daughters, wondering what can I put in there to make them a sweet little necklace. So if you have any clues, these were $1.49, so $0.75 cents for each vial, and I want to figure out what I can put in there. Something special for my daughters, but I haven't figured out what that special is but if you can think of something, let me know. Colored sand. <gasps> Bonnie, that's a brilliant idea. Do you remember when people used to do the colored sand and they would make like scenes and stuff out of them? There you go. Birth, birthstones of their children. Oh, y'all are good. Beach glass. That's a great idea. Man. Y'all are good. I'm going to make sure I write this stuff down. So I'm looking at my schedule to make sure. I'm sorry. I haven't done this in a couple weeks. And well, it's not been that long. But I have kind of thought I needed a little help to remember. Okay. Told you about my cherry tomatoes. Okay. I showed you the fabric bot and the beads bot. Anybody. I, I don't know if Pat is here but pat and i were going to do this dancing ribbons quilt and i wanted to take a moment to show you um i didn't get around to it i was so stressed trying to get ready to go out of town for this hearing you know and so i didn't i just i did not feel when i get that stressed i don't feel creative i can't deal with being creative so what i'm going to show Tiny seed beads in their favorite colors. Good. Another good one, Diane57. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you what, if I don't have list, I can't I I can't function. So sometimes I'll go without list and then it catches up with me. And I'm like, aha. But let me show you the the dancing ribbons. It's a miniature wall hanging. And I'm going to make it because it's really pretty. But it's AQS was the sponsor of it. And you can go on AQS and get your newsletter free. And you should be able to also get that pattern free. It was a quilt along. And they posted photos that people sent in of their work. And let me show you because it really blew my socks off. I thought I wanted to do it one way, but I couldn't quite figure it out. And now after seeing other people's ideas, it makes me more excited about doing it. And it gives me new ideas for better colors, better color choices, combinations that I could have thought of on my own. That's why I love inspiration and sharing what we share on the Internet. Such a great way of being inspired. So let me show you. I've got the show and tell up. And let me show you right away what these people, what these great people did. All right. Now let me make sure I'm at the top. But boy, do I love seeing what other people do, especially if I haven't cut mine out yet. Because I can change things. That was the original. And I was going to try to mimic the original. One thing I love about this is I love how they interlock. And, and they have paper piecing because otherwise it would be really hard to get all those intersections to line up. What I also like about it is how the background is in two tones. So a navy and then a royal blue. And I like that. To me, that gives it extra depth. So let me show you now what other people did. Everybody had their own take. And it's amazing. Like, I, I wouldn't have thought of having that hole in that star open like that. But I like it. It kind of reminds me of a, a black hole in outer space. But look at all these wonderful things. And as I went down... I got more and more ideas. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to have to make several of these 
But thank you, AQS, for putting this on. This is on the aqsblog.com. AQS, American Quilting Society, blog.com. So, and that way you can look at it too. And look, some of the ways people set it up, it changed the look of the rings. It gave them angles and stuff that you wouldn't think of. All right. Look at all of these. There's just so many ideas. It just shows everyone, a hundred people can look at a pattern and all come up with something different. This threaded ribbon look is gorgeous. I love that. Kudos. And look at the white on white with the pure white. I love, the, I really love that. So I thank you for all. And the nice thing with it being a mini art quilt, a mini wall hanging, you don't have to invest a ton of time or materials. So that not that gorgeous? No, I never would have thought, but look how those two colors kind of vibrate off each other. Fantastic. Could be an ombre. That's probably, it probably was an ombre, and she's used the different, the ranges from the different um, depth, the darknesses. So, fantastic, ladies. But I just thought you might like to see this, too, just to see how one pattern can look so different. Like, see, this looks like it's, got pokies sticking out because of the way she did the color. And I really like that. I think it's so smart. And you know what? Look what she did. She added depth in this inner star by doing dark and light of each of that, of that yellow. She gave it an extra dimension. So there are just so many ways to look at this pattern. Ooh, that's pretty, too. So I think there are a lot of creative... Oh, wow. Now, look, this gives an entirely different look. And you know, that's that my favorite color right now. I am just loving that turquoise. And I love how it fades out. It gives this a look of a rounded planet. Isn't that amazing? Wonderful job. Very creative people here. Very creative. And here it looks like it all spirals from this beginning and spins outwards. So depending on how you color it, depending on how you, where you put your, your colors and fabrics, totally changes the look. Look at that. That looks like a spiral. Wow. So it's given me a lot to think about. And now I'm kind of glad that I didn't do it when everyone else was because I can think about it some more and decide how do I want my dancing ribbons to look. Oh, my goodness. These are amazing. Oh, look at that. There are just some fantastic works here. Oh, and this person did the flying geese all around it. How beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Made it into a bigger quilt. So, oh, that's cool, too. Wow. And now, this is interesting. They used the two colors here. But then just did the darker one around the outside. That is very striking. I like that. And this, and it made the, it made them look like concentric rings instead of interlocking rings. There are so many ways to do this. Very talented people. Very talented. Oh, that's pretty. Like an expanded dancing ribbon. Oh, 
Oh, there's pillow shams with those dancing ribbons. Isn't that pretty? That's really nice, too. So you can go dark with the center star or you can go light. Very, very pretty. So I have no clue now, but I know that I'll keep this page up so that I can figure out which one excites me the most, and then I can design mine off of that. Okay, boy, they've even got more since I checked it the other day. Wow, okay, so I think you get the idea. That's cool. I think you get the idea that how fabulous that don't just go at the beginning of a project, but also go back and check afterwards because, so if you want to go check that site out too, the aqsblog.com slash dancing hyphen ribbons. So just look up, go to AQS site, look up dancing ribbons, and hopefully you'll find that the quilt along as well as each person's photo they sent in. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, now I'll come back to y'all. But anyway, you're a member? Yeah, I, 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 I've been signing up the last couple years myself. Oh, thank you, Miss Susan. So it, 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 I'm going to say this, and I truly believe this. As long as it is a paper piece pattern, it is not hard for any stage. Beginners can do paper piece patterns. You just follow the numbers in order that you put them on, and um, it, you can do any paper piece pattern. So, all right. So, yeah, begin with the end in mind, Marsha. You're exactly right. Exactly right. So, and what I would do too, that's a good time to take the picture, print it in black and white, and color it in. Print several of them, color them in, and try. I bet you the ones with amazing results did that coloring. So, that is a good thing. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and I've got some things to show you. Boy, i got so much to talk about and show you today. I can't go away anymore. Too much happens. But I wanted to remind you that the Mancuso Virtual Quilt Show is coming up August 12th through 15th. And there are still a few classes that don't need you to... They have a lot of classes where the teacher will send you for a fee a kit, a um, supply kit that you use to take her class. But there are still a good number of classes where you don't need a supply kit and you would have time to sign up. August 6th is the final day to sign up for the virtual class. It's, it's all online and you'll have your virtual class and there are still some really good classes and great teachers. I, um, this time with all the trial stuff, I just didn't have the money to do it. But they're going to continue doing these virtual quilt shows. So the very next one, I'm going to take maybe two classes. <laughs> so anyway, but just go to, um, it's, go to Mancuso and it's their quilt fest. And, um, you can look up who the teachers are, and if it's too late for you to do it this time, check the quality of the teachers and the classes so you will know when the next one happens, you can sign up right away. Some of the classes only allow a certain number of people. Miss Nadine is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if anyone has any, Polly, you know that you can email me or you call me on the phone, I might answer the phone. <laughs> you know what I found out? I've been missing a lot of calls because my bedroom telephone ringer's off. I didn't realize that. And uh, 
when I got back, I was taking a couple hours of nap, a couple hours of nap right in the middle of the afternoon or evening. I was missing stuff left and right. But anyway, but yes, Polly, I'll be glad to help, sweetie. So, Nadine, have you did you swim in your pool recently? So I'm getting so excited about Diana Wright's pool and. I can't even go swim in it. It's way over there, but <laughs> I'm so excited for her. So anyway, there's Pat still recovering. Did you, did you ever find out for sure what your illness was? So you dear heart, I'm so sorry y'all were so sick. I'm so sorry. Yesterday, Nadine swam. That's wonderful, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, I'll be glad to help you anytime, Polly. I can't help myself. I'm like this natural teacher. Drive everybody crazy because I want to explain to everybody how you do something. <laughs> I'm a mess. Okay. So, like I said, I've got plenty of exciting things to show you today. And I've got some beaded masks that I'll show you in a few minutes. And here's a mask. I made for Mark, but unfortunately, I wanted some black elastic. It'll be in. I had to order some from Amazon, but I made something. I knew that I wanted to sew a lot while we were riding in the car, and I knew for my nerves I needed to sew so I didn't worry about too much. So I made something. Now, you know my favorite built new building material, don't you? Do you remember what I use? Oh, honey. Wow. Wow. Pat, thank goodness Don has done so well. That is scary. Oh, my goodness. So, you know my favorite building material. My favorite building material is foam core board. Remember how lately I've made all kinds of, you know, shelves and, and portable design walls? Well, let me get my stuff out of here. As you can see, here's a rubber glove in case I had to touch something on the trip. And then I've got my Jenny Beyer needle minder. I've got some snips. I've got my favorite thimbles. I love these because you can put them in boiling water and make them fit your hands perfectly. Of course, I had this glued on right, in fact, I'll show you where the glue was, right here, but I knocked them off. But got to take, got to take my little flamingo and... Let me see. Oh, and today is my son-in-law's birthday. The one that lives on the Eastern David. And um, so here's a scissor fob. Some scraps of my... And I'm ordering a different kind of elastic because the white elastic's a little tough. And here are my little flexible vinyl thimbles. See those? I like taking those. Nail polish. Took some more beads. Some fray check. A marker. And so this I made out of foam core board. Okay. I used a hot glue gun. Let me see if I can peel this. Now this glue on here bothers me. It makes it look ugly. But um, I used a glue gun. And I was in a big hurry because I was doing this when I should have been packing. So I knew I was going to run out of time. But anyway, there we go. I took and just kind of cut it by looking at it. You can, you can see it wasn't measured nice. And I lowered this so I could see in there. There's that side. And then I made these little cubbies. And what I did is then once I made the foam core, and I used the thickest I had. It was a black paper on one side and white paper on the inside. But can you see that it's not square? I just cut it real fast, glued it together. Then I took some gray fabric that I had 
that I really didn't like because it's kind of tough fabric. And I glued it with white glue, glued it onto the foam core board. Then I took it outside and used some spray in, um, clear spray sealer on it. Did several bits, several passes with the, the, the spray sealer because I didn't want to take a chance on it getting wet and then I would lose it. Now look at this right here. You see this? You see this? I hot glued them in place. That way I knew they wouldn't fall out. And I've had this for years and never used it. But now I loved it. And that way I could put this in here. And so it's kind of nice. This is made for like a little bobbin if you wanted to fit on there. But nothing falls out. Isn't that cool? So anyway, so then I put the fabric on. Now I had planned, I put this, this ribbon on the back with hot glue because I... I got, I made these, these clips, and this had an adjustable buckle on it, and I don't remember where I got this, it came off of something, and I was hoping that having it run through here, that then I could clip it onto the air vents, but unfortunately, it didn't work because this would pull out of the air vent. It was just too awkward. I didn't have enough of a dashboard for it to sit on. So what I ended up doing is still using those clips and I opened, hi Vicki Robles, and I opened the, the glove compartment and sat it in there and then clipped it on different things to just kind of hold it I love this. Then I took it apart, took it into the hotel room, and kept working on it. I, I even did this. Look, I hot glued some needles on the inside, and that way that stuck too. So I just wanted to, and here's my hand sanitizer, and I took all these things that I thought I might need, and... Here are some beading needles, but I took all these things I thought I would need and on my trip with me, and it was great. And then when I got out of the car, I went into the hotel room with it, and it sat on the bed. And that way I could work and keep all of my stuff, because I have plenty of little, um, little bags to carry supplies, but what I needed is when I was riding in the car, I needed something that would sit open and hold stuff so it didn't fall. I, I tell you what I'm thinking of doing. I have a feeling Mark would have a fit, but it's my car. I'm thinking of using some self-stick Velcro on the dashboard and putting and putting the other part underneath here. And that way I can sit it on the dashboard. But if not, it worked really good sitting right in my glove box like this. And it was a great thing and it cost me nothing. I had everything here, but it was, it was nice to sit on the bed in the hotel room and just we, cause we just laid in the bed and watched TV and I sewed. And that was really a lot of fun. So I just thought I'd show you what I made for I left. And, you know, it's fun inventing these things. And it doesn't cost anything. So, oh, your client just left. Okay. So that was, now let me show you these masks that I was working on. Okay. This is, well, okay. When I had to go to court, we would have to have a mask on. And I wrote my black and white, I wrote, I wore my black and white um, loose top with a lime green t-shirt underneath of it. And I made this to match my outfit. And it made me feel brave. <laughs> but uh, see all the beading I did? I did this before I left. And what fun this was to do. And I'll show you. And I thought, I looked a little sophisticated in it. 
So there it was. And I had a lime green t-shirt with the, the rayon black and white design. And it made me feel good. Made me feel confident. So that's the first one I beat it. I got to tell you this, though. I had my last, like a quarter's worth of lime beads because I wanted to put a few more on both sides of this. Just a few more. Unfortunately, before I went to bed, I put them in a little piece of a napkin so I wouldn't lose them and crunched the napkin and put it on my table. In my panic to get ready to go, I threw it away. So my few last lime beads, they got thrown away. And the trash got taken out and the garbage men had picked it up. So <laughs> that that's life with Deb. So anyway, then I gotta show you my next one. But I made I made this this mask and this mask. And this is Mark's mask. So, anyway, I'm excited about these. And it looks like we're going to be wearing them for a while. So, I said I wanted to get, I've got the white elastic. But it's kind of it's kind of tough. It's a little, you know, makes your ears kind of go forward. So, I looked on Amazon. And they've got a velvety type stretch. It's supposed to be pretty strong. But it's much softer for your ears. So I'm hoping that I'll get that pretty soon. So I lined my mask with t-shirts. Okay. So I read this t-shirt is so soft and comfortable. Plus, it's very good at stopping transmission of, of um, moisture. You know, anything that viruses. And then the outside has to be batik because batik is such a tight weave. So they say these are the best. Batik on the outside, t-shirt material on the inside. And that way it's a soft, comfortable mask that gives you, I've seen anywhere between 70 and 80% effective, effectiveness. So I love it. Oh, now that's a good idea, Jody. Oh, you use the soft stuff. Good, Cheryl. Thank you for telling me. Oh, that's a neat idea. I am. I have asthma, and I am claustrophobic. And I found the t-shirt material has really helped me because it feels so nice, and it lets me feel like I can breathe better. Also, I use this mask pattern. And I give it a little extra space in here because I didn't like the way the other one, every time I breathed in, it would suck up against my face and make me feel like I was suffocating. So now, especially using the two layers, and I gave myself just a little extra breathing room. So now I'm going to show you what I've done with this. What I did is I happened to have beads that match this batik. So I have these light lavender type beads for the purpley areas. Then I had these teal blue for the light blue teal areas. And then I have, let me see, what did I do with it? I have some dark blue. And these are the tiny little seed beads. Just the tiny little things. Oh, okay. Come on. Where? Drop my, hold on. Uh, it's down, it's down in my basket, but I have a deep blue bead to go down in these parts. And so I just used a darker version of the bead color to do the threads so you really can hardly see them. Now you do see some of it coming through on the back. If I hadn't been in such a rush, I would have left the bottom open so I could put the beads on and have my hand in between. But I had to get it ready to go because even if I wasn't done with the beading, nobody would know and I could still wear it. 
but I just think that it's so pretty. And I like doing something a little different. And the seed beads are nice because they're small enough that it's not horribly obvious. I mean, it's not like it's too glitzy to wear with just your jeans or shirt. And it makes me happy to have, and these were just lying around. I get these sun, I mean, eyeglass holders from the Dollar Tree, a dollar store or whatever. And when they end breaks on them, I save the little seed beads. And then I can use them on stuff like this. And you see my bead needle is right here. There's my bead needle right there. And so this was fun to work on in the car, back and, and there and back. But I just think it's really, really pretty. So, and the nice thing, the nice thing is with batiks, you can find all kinds of, like this one will probably get beaded too. Because see that pretty fabric? I think it'd be pretty to put a few beads on and then I even thought, you know, Diana Wright and I, I think, saw this beautiful woman who cut out lace and made it look like she had a feathered mask. Cut the way that the, the, the lace that she applied on her mask made it look like feathers. And it was gorgeous. And I figured, like, if I feel, oh, here are the beads I meant to show you. They were right here. Okay, let me bring you back down to see this. Okay, so you see I had the teal beads. Now, the light lavenders, I've used all of them. But see these dark blue ones? They're going to be for the dark blue areas of the mask. So I was able to do a graduated look from the pale blue-green all the way down to the dark blue. And this is just having fun. Ah, you know, honey, if a few beads are good, a ton are going to be better. And then, and I'm not even done with that. Are you ready for this? Remember, I got these from my daughter for my birthday. Well, you wait to see what I did with these. Okay, I take the lavender pen and I come here and I outline the lavender shape. Look at this. I outline the lavender shape with this gel pen because this is, these are gel rollers that work on papers or fabric. But I, I made a mask for my lawyer as a thank you. And I did, I used the same fabric for hers, although I didn't put as many beads. I thought, she probably doesn't wear, want to wear too many beads into the courtroom. So I just put a few beads, and then I did a light outlining. Let me see if I can show you what it does. It gives it a little bare touch of glimmer. And let me try another one, like right here. And with this gel, it goes on so easily, and it gives it just the littlest bit of glimmer. So if you have somebody you'd like to make a gift for, this is something that you can make free, probably with things you've got around the house. And then you've got a nice gift that shows you care, but hopefully you can... See, just that little line around that is a little glitter line. But I loved it because it was subtle, but it was different. And then like, I have this light blue, and I went up and did it around here because I practiced. I practiced on a little piece of this fabric first before I did hers. But... So anyway, it's a lot of fun. So you sit around in the evening and you beat them and then you outline them. And it just makes it really sweet. So, and then I have gold. So like if I had a place where I didn't have the exact color I would want, I could just come in here. Now, I know you can see that, but see how it's just a delicate little line? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? So... You know, 
just there are so many things that you can be creative on. And I thought if we've got to wear these, I want one to match every outfit if I can possibly do it and use my creativity. Okay. So look at that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? All right. So and these are called Gel Extreme. And I got them from Amazon because I don't go shopping anymore right now. Um, go to Amazon.com. Oh, you know what? I did use, I used this on her lighter colors. This, this minty metallic on the lighter blue. And it was so pretty. But with just that fine little outline... It just gives it that nice touch without being over the top. So, hello, Grand. Um, I wash, I hand wash my masks. And let me, what did I do now with my green one? Okay. I hand wash my mask and I usually use like a shampoo. And this has been washed three, two, three times, and I hand wash it, and then I gently squeeze it like that. A lot of times I'll roll it in a clean, dry hand towel to get the excess moisture, and then I hang them up to dry. So this has been washed multiple times, and you can see right now it's a little wrinkly, but just make sure that after you hand wash it, you... While it's still damp, just smooth it out by hand because you can't iron it. Smooth it out by hand on each side, and there you go. And you can do that a couple times while it's drying. But what we would do at the hotel is I, if I wore this, it came back and got hand washed. I tried not to wear them twice because I felt like if they had any... COVID on the outside, I didn't want to be handling it. So every time I would wear the mask, I'd come back in and throw it in the bathroom sink and wash it by hand. I just didn't want them to shrink up like they I thought they might if I threw them in the wash machine. Mark puts his little mask. That, the early ones I made of were pleated rectangles. He throws those into the wash all the time. But with these, I do them by hand. Okay. You used to beat hair. Oh, neat. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's better if you do beat it before you... You can sew the lining on. Just don't close the bottom yet. This one, I sewed the beads on before I closed the bottom lining. And But, you know what? This one, I had to go and use it. So, that's not... those Those few little places it came through that doesn't bother me you don't even feel it or anything so anyway a lot of fun a lot of fun and it just keeps you feeling creative and that's all good and you know these little seed beads you can get this stuff everywhere in fact look at this that came from this was one of my eyeglass holders and one of the little rubber things fell off the bottom Look at those gorgeous seed beads. They'd be wonderful on one of the masks. So that's what I do now. It keeps me out of keeps me out of trouble. You know, too much time on Deb's hands. It's not a good thing. So, okay, I showed you that. And then if you look back here, you'll see what I'm working on. And I found this fabric. I don't know. I just thought this was cool. If I had more time and more energy, I might have done tried to do a street in between each row of houses and do green grass in between them and blue sky and put trees. But I think right now I want to get it and I'm going to sash them together and maybe try to figure out something. But I want to get it done. You have vacation now. Yay, Nadine. Yay, Nadine. So, what did Diana Wright say? 
You better not ever hush, Diana. What you, what you love, you giving us all kinds of great ideas. And, okay. Let me, okay. So next thing I'm going to talk about is going to be Jenny Beyer. And I wanted to let you know that she has really invested a lot of time and energy to start a YouTube channel. And she has free classes on her YouTube channel. And, oh my gosh. And let me tell you, the reason, most of you know this, but in case you don't, the main reason I love Jenny Byer so much is I had given up. In the early 90s, I just gave up on quilting. I was sick and tired of pastel, calico, little tiny flower fabric. And I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but I was sick and tired of Sunbonnet Sue and overall Bill. <laughs> and I just, I didn't realize at the time I needed to be an art quilter, but I got just tired of some of the repetitive designs. So I just put my quilting away for about 10 years. If I never picked it up again, that was okay with me. And then I saw a Jenny Byer quilt. Oh my gosh. And if you, if you don't know, oh, thank you. I forgot what I said, but overall, Sam. But um, I, um, I saw her moon glow quilt and just my heart just went pity pat. I was hooked. And. So if you if you don't if you aren't familiar with Jenny Byer, go look at her site, JennyBeyer.com. And her colors are so intense. She started quilting while they were living overseas in India. And so she didn't know. Well, you know, there weren't many books out there about quilting in the 70s, but you know, because it was kind of just becoming a resurgent art because of the bicentennial. And she just chose the colors she saw in the Indian markets. And they're all deep, rich, saturated colors. And so her first grandmother's flower, she did on a navy background. She didn't know that over here you used muslin or white fabric. So she just developed her own style. And thank goodness she did. Because when I saw her deep, rich, saturated colors, I fell in love. I thought, that's what I love. That got me excited. So that's why Jenny Byer means so much to me. So I just wanted to tell you this. I got her newsletter um, yesterday, and she said, um, oh, anyway, Susan will probably give you a, um, a link for Jenny Byer's YouTube channel, or just go to YouTube and type in Jenny Byer. And um, how wonderful she's going to do so much teaching on YouTube. We're so lucky. We're so, so lucky. So she said opening the retail shop 20 years ago gave her the opportunity to bring us more products, to have space to teach classes, and best of all, it allowed her to meet so many of us. She said she'll miss that terribly. The closing of the brick-and-mortar store certainly does not mean, though, that she's retiring. She's still going to be designing new fabrics, and the Internet business will continue to bring you fabrics, designs, and quilting products. She will be expanding her online instructions with ongoing video lessons, such as those currently on Border Prints. Make sure to check out her YouTube channel to see them all. And then I noticed, since she didn't have anything particular, they're moving from the brick-and-mortar store to the new facility for mail ordering. Um, and since she didn't have time to pick out something for, she every Wednesday she runs a sale. She it offer, is offering us two free patterns, two free patterns. And so um, I have those, and if Jen, I mean, if Susan wants to enter more, I can enter them uh, below when we're done with this. But they're beautiful patterns. And that's one thing that I really love about my Miss Jenny is she, almost all of her patterns are free. And so, and she said, watch out. 
because this week they're moving everything to the new mail order. But she is going to open her treasure of her early prints and sell them sale prices. So if you haven't signed up for her free newsletter at JennyBuyer.com, please do. Because you will then be the first one to get notice of her amazing sales. And what she had done is she saved five to seven yards of every fabric she ever designed and they printed. And finally, when her attic was groaning from the weight of it, she decided to start selling them, part with them. But she had 20 years really, really, really good, uh, really good um, sales with her shop. And we'll miss it. In fact, when I show you the pictures, I'll be showing you pictures soon all of your pictures. I also have a picture of her shop, mostly empty. But anyway. Oh, I was talking about Miss Jenny Byer, but I'm tickled that your husband made a mask. Yay! I like that man. That is absolutely wonderful. But sign up for the AQS newsletter. You don't even have to join to sign up for the newsletter and sign up for Jenny Byers newsletter because they come to your mailbox. If you busy that week, just delete it. But you open it up, you might have a treasure, like two free patterns. All right. So now the next thing to talk about, I don't know if you remember but my newest grandchild is due in eight days. August 10th, Donato will be somewhere around August 10th. He'll be born. And I know poor Nikki is so ready to have him arrive because it, it gets so com uncomfortable at the end of a pregnancy. And especially when you're only like 5'2". There's just not that much room, you know, in there. And... It's so hot now. Poor thing. So here is the first finished block of Little Donnie's quilt. And I got to tell you this, ladies. I looked for months for a pattern for Little Donnie. And I pick a pattern because I like it. And then I realize it requires 264 half square triangles. What in the world? Now, I know that y'all are going to look at the picture of this quilt and go, no duh, Deb. But somehow I didn't see that it has a kajillion pinwheels. And pinwheels are made out of four half square triangles. Look at all those pinwheels. What was I thinking? I guess I wasn't. I was just using my heart. So I'll show you. Got my foam core project project manager board. All right, let me show you what I've got. First, I took my fabrics, made strip sets, and you're right, Diana Ray, you know that. And made strip sets so then I could cut them out because I needed sets of three and then I needed sets of two. And so I went ahead and I said, I am not going to sew together, you know, hundreds of two and a half inch squares. So strip sets save time. And then you can see now I'm starting to sew the strip sets to the white. And here are a bajillion pinwheels and I'm worried I don't have enough so luckily I've got so I was going to use these strips for the binding but when I realized I was short on them then what I did is cut long strips of white to a long two and a half inch strip of red and then I laid my ruler back and forth to cut the half square triangles out. Does that make any sense? So 
what I can, let me see if I can show you this better. All right. So I would sew a strip of white and a strip of red. And then I would take, I have a ruler in here, but where, let me see if I can feel it. But maybe I can just show you with this ruler. But I figured out this and already did it with one of these strips. So if these are sewn together, it's a long, picture a long strip of white and a long strip of red. Then I come along here and I make a cut and then I come back here. And let me see, how did I do it? There was some way, hold on, let me get this like it's down near the end. And what I did is I knew this had to be a triangular shape. So I cut this here. And then I came over and cut it like this. And so by the time I cut it, it ended up a nice square. And then I turned it this way and cut it. And then this way and cut it. And ended up without wasting. By having these, I was able to cut half square triangles out. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, but first, when I first made the half square triangles, I did the eight at a time method. And that was wonderful. But I didn't count correctly. And so here are all of my pre-cuts. And now I'm assembling these things. And let me show you. I have to have this done. So I'm going to be working on this until nothing else gets done until this baby's quilt gets done. But I'm, I'm making now, I've got all of these pinwheels made, I hope. Then now I'm taking the two pieces and matching them to a white. Three pieces, matching it to a white. This is another um, two piece. So some have two, two, three two, two, three. So it's just kind of put it together that way. And I think it's going to be so cute. So what do you think? You put the squares. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And the reason now that I'm having to try to do a strip of white and a strip of red, I only have strips left. I don't have, I don't have any more, um, bigger pieces so I'm sad but this this fabric I'll sh let me show you what it is I I can take credit for getting no this, mm, this one and these I can take credit for those but this this and these came in a matching set in fact I bought this but now I don't know where to use it and I don't have any selvages, so I'm sorry. I think I got it from Fat Quarter Shop, or I might have gotten it from Hancock's of Paducah. But see this cute border? And they just love all the little African um, animal shapes. So this is, and what I did is I looked at this fabric and went, ah, so I ordered that fabric. This fabric was just to have something bright. I didn't want to use the yellow orange, but I did get a yellow that's a little more orange than normal. I wanted something bright, and I always looked at my stripes and tried to figure out what I needed. So thank you very much. I, I think it's going to be a cute quilt. I think it's going to go much easier than Russell's, but still, what was I thinking making all of those pinwheels? So I am going to get that done, then put it on the frame, and probably do something a little simple to, so I can get it quilted and get it out to them. And then, oh, so the animals are going to go in between the rows of blocks. I'm doing this a little differently because I didn't have enough of the animals for the whole border. The outer border will then be... All done. The outer border, come here, is going to be that striped fabric. 
I can't see where the big fabric is in that case, but that striped fabric that you saw will be my outer border. And then I was going to put a nice red, that red fabric for the binding, but I may have to use it all up. So, so. Oh, new Kim Deal. I do love Kim Deal. I know that now I'm an art quilter. I always thought I'm a traditional quilter. And now I'm, I'm really art quilting is my favorite. But Kim Deal, whoo, those are pretty. I grew up not far from Williamsburg, Virginia. So you get those colonial colors and I love them. So I was thinking, I was wondering if I might have room to put, have you seen the quilts that have the mama elephant and the baby elephants holding onto her tail and they're walking along? I thought I might try to put, but instead of having a mommy sized elephant, I would put a bigger brother with a little brother. And I thought that would be cute. So that's Donnie's quilt. And oh, last the last show I did, which was two weeks ago, we worked on these boho beads. And I've still got one that I've got to send to my Susan. I've just got it now that I'm home and awake. I need to get it done. But Miss Bonnie, I hope she sees her clock button. These were so much fun. So you need to, if you didn't get a chance to see it, you need to go back two weeks and look because they were so, so easy to do. And in fact, I'll go ahead and give you a hint. Next week, I got a couple more ideas on how to decorate fabric. And we're actually going to make a journal cover. We're going to do it. So next week... I'm going to, um, I'm going to use one of these. We're going to decorate that fabric. You know me, I got to have my bling. But here are the boho beads that I made the last show. So go looking for those. Next week, we're going to actually complete a journal cover. So be looking for that. And then I promise to get back to, um, our Thursday art quilt. And this, we're, we, I've got to finish our um, favorite childhood memory um, design. And I will get working on that so Thursday night we can show that. All right. I think we're ready to look at y'all's photos. And so I'll get back Thursday to my challenge. And then next week we're going to work on how do I put a, a journal cover on a journal? And I'm most likely just going to use something like Mark every once in a while gets a, a book that's about this big from his work where it can be like a diary or an event planner or whatever. You can, I love the marble notebooks you can get from the dollar store. Anything like that, you can glue the fabric you decorate onto it and I'm going to embellish it with cool looking things so make sure you come back I'm going to because I remember I tried for a couple of weeks I'd use different kinds of paints and stamps and all of that to try how can I embellish this fabric so I'm going to start again and I know I know now what works and what doesn't and we're going to make a a real with a closure, a Velcro closure and everything that I can give to my granddaughter. So, all right, let's look at your photos. Big book. Uh, uh, I love Miss Nadine. And Miss Nadine, we're going to get those soldiers back. You don't worry about it, honey. Because y'all are so kind to welcome us into your country. So, you don't worry. We're going to get a lot of things fixed. Very soon. Very, very soon. And people, please wear your mask. Do not take chances. It is not worth it. Let me turn off the overhead light, guys. I'll be right back.
All right. Mark put a great big pork roast in the crock pot. And he put some savory seasonings. And then I went in and put fruity seasonings like orange marmalade and grape jelly and grapes and real grapes and real cherries and some spicy brown mustard. And I can't wait. It's smelling really good up there. All right. Let's see. They had that pork roast on sale for 97 cents a pound. You know how cheap I am, girls. That was my price. All righty. Here we go. Um, I don't know if Alexis has put, whoops, let me, I don't know if Alexis has put any more photos up. I tried looking and I didn't see any, but I'll just show y'all again her beautiful hand embroidery. So if she didn't put any up, hopefully she will this week because I want to show you. And so that is, oh gosh, something hellbat. That's hellbat. And we appreciate, here we appreciate all kinds of art because that's what it all is. And whatever way you are happiest creating, that's what we love. And this is, I think, the one that she loves the most that she associates the character she associates with and these are all transformers i know that when my son was little now they were very different back then but he adored transformers and here's the newest one that she was working on so she's done all the outline stitching and then she'll start filling in so i can't wait to see what she does next so way to go alexis Glad to see it. B has been stopping by, so I want to show her art again. She's been, she's in England, so she not, isn't often on when we are. But she is now working, enjoying art quilting, and it shows. It's absolutely beautiful. And here is back when she was doing everything by hand. And this is amazing. Look at that. She made her own pebbles out of, uh, I think it's like a melted Tyvek material kind of stuff, painted. I mean, she's so talented. But here is another one of her new machine landscapes. So, B, we love that you're still working on this and enjoying it. And keep sending us your photos because we do love them. All right. But I just wanted to acknowledge Miss B has sent me a couple um, emails. And I just love that she's still there. So then I don't think I fully get the Lily Care package that a friend of Bonnie sent her. And simple bus deal as we speak. But is that just lovely? It just shows you we aren't the only ones who love our body. And I love this photo. I, I've been deleting photos because I get too many on the computer. But I just couldn't delete this, which is the quilt we made, gosh, a year and a half ago or so for Miss Bonnie. Because she was such a pivotal person in helping the success, early success of this group. And we love our Miss Bonnie. So I'll show you guys that. Um, next um, next week. This is her. This is her clothing rack that she bought and put together, and now has her quilts, her um, completed quilt tops, and supplies on. And I thought that was really creative because you can just hang them over the device. That is wonderful. Way to go, Miss Bonnie. Great for Miss Cheryl. And. Here's a funny that I just love, and it says, I believe in a better world where chickens can cross the road without having their motives questioned. I laughed out loud at that one. That is so cute. Thank you for your funnies, Miss Cheryl. And I'm saving these because I know she's working on some additional blocks. Now, this is her moves in motion. And let me tell you guys, that is so pretty. I'm just really impressed. Her choices of color. Look how she threw some turquoise and teal in with 
what were navies and blues. And you know what that does? It gives it sparkle and moves the eye around the quilt. So that is an expert use of color and fabric. And I, I just, I'm amazed. I love it. Love, love, love it. Besides the fact that she was making three-inch circles and six-inch circles. So way to go. Here it is again from a little bit of a distance. Isn't that just beautiful? So I'm, I'm a big, big fan of Miss Cheryl's work. Way to go, hon. Okay. Now let's see who is next. Let me see. I just have a few things. Uh, Miss Jenny Byer made a design. If everything she's got going, she designed a new quilt. And it's for an 1840s grist mill right near. She lives in Great Falls, Virginia, which is very historic. And it's northern Virginia, 20 minutes outside of D.C. And it's a wonderful place. And they had a mill, and it inspired her. The wheel, the water wheel inspired this, and the color was inspired by the water itself. So this is a brand new pattern that's coming out that she's going to be working on. So you can always go. It's called Colvin, C-O-L-V-I-N, run. And I guess it's grain mill, Colvin run quilt. But um, and it's pretty reasonable. It's not too big. And you can either make it the table runner or the square size. And I was showing y'all where this was her, her um, shop up in Great Falls. And it has the for rent sign. And I'll miss that very much. And then here is her shop. Nearly totally empty. And that just breaks my heart. <laughs> it just breaks my heart. I love these cabinets that she used to showcase thimbles and things in. But that's about all the fabric she has left there. So they've done a really good job. Really good job. But I, I'm sad. I'll miss that shop. All right. But, you know, it's time for her to do things that she, she still loves doing the tours to Greece and Bali and all different places. And she loves designing. So she's still doing things she dearly loves. Okay. Let me see. I think, see if you remember this crayon quilt. I made this for my friend Mildred. She sent me a picture to show me that she has it on the wall. That's my friend Mildred's quilt now that I made for her. And that was the crayon quilt. It was such fun. Just something a little simple. And here is my little Russell who's had his hair cut. And then I've got some other new pictures of him. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you. I think this is it. Oh, I know what. Before I go into Russell, my Katie is making pickles and sauerkraut. And here's my Katie's garden. She's the one on the eastern shore. She has loved working from home. Because now that she doesn't have to commute, she has more time for her garden. This is my granddaughter, Kylie, who is, let me see, 15 this year? I forget now. I better check with her. And um, so these are just some pictures that Katie sent me of her yard and her garden. And I'm so proud of her for that garden. She said that garden has really gotten her through the frustrating times with COVID. So... It's nice to have a, you have to have a hobby you can do from home. But I love all of her flowers and her vegetables and her sunflowers. And this is her little farm. She has goats and sheep. She might have gotten rid, oh, her son who's 17 ran over a beauty bush I gave her. And she said, I can't have anything nice. And I said, put a cage up around it. It will come back. And there it is. 
Once you have a beauty berry, you can't get rid of them. And here is one of her lambs and one of her goats eating a bowl of a little older squash. They don't care it's a little older. They'll eat it no matter what. This is a tomato she grew. Oh, my gosh, that looks so good. Give me a pack of bologna and some white bread and mayonnaise and step back. That's all I need. Isn't that beautiful? This is one of her cabbage that she used to make sauerkraut. That's my Katie girl. Here is a bag of peas that she's put up for next year. I never I told her I never grew enough peas to have for a dinner, much less to put away for next year. She grew all these flowers in her garden. We always loved going out and picking flowers from the garden. And they're beautiful. So way to go, Miss Katie. Now let me see. Oh, I had one. I have little Russell. Okay. So you saw the one picture of him. Here is Russell with his little boy haircut and Nikki, Mama to be, and my son Christopher. And there, I love the face. He's not sure why he has to do it, but it's like, can we hurry up and finish? <laughs> so cute. And here's Russell running across the floor. He loves to run. And they have moved in with her parents. They're doing a generational home. And so they've now taken over the big living room for Russell. He's got like the best play space you could imagine. And there is my Nikki with little Russell. And she is so ready to have this next baby. And there they're laying on the couch. There's Nikki and then Russell laying on her. So she'll be having the new baby soon. And this is my son. He's doing... That he does studio work. That's what he his degree in college was. And so yesterday he did at, from a distance, you know, from someone like I guess on some um, remote group. And he did a mixing session so they can send him the work and he'll mix it and put it all together. So I'm just so proud of him. He's trying to find a way to work through this COVID. I mean, it's hard to... You know, when you're used to performing and you can't perform. So, I'm real proud of him. Then, oh, Dora, our new member, Dora. Um, in fact, you might want to know this, um, Alexis. She loves um, characters, dragons, and she's a member of a Scottish heritage group. And so really cool, really, really cool, all her interests. So look at these dragons. I just thought of Alexis when I saw this because they have like a kindred spirit, you know. They both love these creative things. So this is in progress. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let me get this back down, go to the next one. But look at these. Isn't that amazing? That is just beautiful. So I'm very excited that Dora has joined our group. And look at this castle. Isn't that amazing? So I just love it. You know, uh, I tell Mark all the time that there is a hobby for everyone. There's an interest for everyone. Look at this dragon. There's his neck, his face. Look at those eyes. And then... His fins, I guess you would call them. But anyway, I'm really excited. So glad that Dor uh, shared some of this with us. All right. Now, let's see. Then we've got Miss Jody, who has already done her best childhood memory quilt. And you remember, Jody did. This was her um, self-portrait. And it shows all of her cute quilts around her that she's done since doing this. Then, remember the day I did the little Hobbit mini wall hanging? 
she did one too, and it's cute as can be. She's got little hidden bunnies and is a little bear. Then this is her. Oh boy, now I forgot. What is it when the moon gets in front of the sun? But I love that. That is so cute. And then her favorite childhood memory was playing hide and go seek. While peeking, of course. <laughs> but I was so tickled. I think that she did a great job of that. And she's got a lot of talent. I love seeing her talent come out. You know, when you love what you're doing, it's never work, is it? Okay, Miss Nadine, I saved. I, ha I didn't find new ones for Miss Nadine. Um, I might have looked in the wrong place, but it has touched my heart. Like you won't know that she made this quilt for us. Miss Nadine is from Germany. And she knows that some people like me have had a hard time with what's going on in our country. And being as beautiful and sweet as she is, she wanted to honor our friendship. All of She made this for all of our group. And oh my gosh, what a dear, dear person. I feel so lucky to have a friend like her. And you know what? Germany is an amazing country. I mean, a big economic power, a powerhouse when it comes to engineering. We're just so lucky to have German friends. So wasn't that sweet of her? And she even, this was Monticello, Jefferson's home on that label. I love it. Oh, and then she, I know she's working on these, and these are very complex pieces. And since she's on vacation now, I have a feeling we'll have some more pictures. So thank you, Miss Nadine. Just beautiful work, sweetheart. And thank you for being part of our family. I don't know what we would do without you. So now let me see. I'm hoping our Sarah, Quilting from the Soul, will pop in, and I just want to remind you, she's working on a beautiful parasol dolls quilt, and that is just lovely. I love her work. Okay, and let me see, go back. Um, I still have where Cheryl what she got for the two baby quilts from Pineapple Fabrics. We love our Pineapple Fabrics. I tell you what, I can't wait. Every day when I see their email in the box, it's like, yay, one of my favorites. Okay. And, you know, I think I might have gotten the baby fabric from Bear Creek Quilts. I'm not sure. Here's Miss Sonia's beautiful curved log cabin quilt. I hope Miss Sonia's doing well and staying safe and healthy. South Carolina's really had a tough time. All right. And then I want to do one more view of Miss Susan's moon quilt because, oh, my gosh, I love this thing. And it reminds me of the moon quilt I'm making. And I can't wait when I have mine done and look at hers and see the similarities. So do love Miss Susan's moon quilt. And she might not call it a moon quilt. I just did. <laughs> so I think that is it for us today with pictures. But if you would like to see your photos on our site, please send them to our time to quilt at twc.com. And we will put your quilts up and enjoy them so much. So, that was wonderful. Y'all are so very talented. And thank you for all your inspiration. I mean, that's that's why I love show and tell. Because we can share ideas and get help keep each other excited. Chris Genuviati soon, who's working so hard. He must have just finished his. He does a Sunday live stream also. And he's been working so hard with his wife about ready to have a baby. He's been doing all the moving himself and getting his new studio ready and everything. So I couldn't be more proud of that boy. You don't know. I love him to bits. 
So, mm, circle play quilt. Okay, Susan. I love moons. I just, I get excited about moons. Oh, when I went out of town, I went to Solomon's. And at midnight, I went over to walk on the boardwalk. And you're looking over the Patuxent River. And it's right near the opening to the Chesapeake Bay. And there was a moon out. And it was only two-thirds of a moon. But it was so bright and big. And it just shone in silver ripples in a path straight to where I was standing. It was so pretty. So, And then the smell of the water. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sue. Oh, honey, is it is it the COVID crisis, hon? Oh, thank you, sweetie. Yeah, we're probably just about done soon, too. I think I've talked their ear off. You know how I am. But uh, I'm so sorry. Um, who Whose niece was it now? Sue's niece. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I hope that, you know, we'll keep her close to our heart. Um, Pat, uh, her husband, is just getting over COVID. So please be careful, all of you. But um, anyway, are there any questions that anybody has about any of the projects? Yeah, my son's he's got a lot on his plate. I said, please take good care of yourself. It kills me not to be up there to help him. So, oh, this virus is frustrating. Like, I'd love to send him a tray of lasagna and a chicken pot pie, but I can't even get that to him. So, but... Um, Sue Smith, please keep us posted on your niece. But I was going to tell you that Pat Fry's husband is recovering from COVID. So we are going to keep her close to our heart and hope that she will pull through this. I know it's got to be horrible, horrible. So we, we will be, we'll be thinking of you, darling. In fact, I thought of you today because I was putting together our heart and home block exchange. Oh, where do I purchase my beads online? I purchased them. These that you saw, all that you saw today were on Joanne Fabrics. And what I do is I sign up for their newsletter too. And then when the sale price, it has to get just right. I want it to be at least 70% off with free shipping. And if I wait, I just keep watching. Sometimes it takes three weeks to get that price. Then I zoom in and snap it up. So that's, that's what I did. Also, eBay. Um, you can buy beads from China for really good prices. It takes four weeks probably to get them in, but it's worth it for the prices. So that's, that's kind of what I do. Joanne's on sale or eBay, and they usually come from China, so it takes a while to get in, but the prices are... Very inexpensive. Oh, honey. I'm so, yes, you know, I. you're right. Poor Susan's been through it. And poor Sue. I'm so sorry, hon. And then Sherry, have you moved yet, darling? I know that you were talking and getting ready to move. And I was just wondering. Oh, that is so sweet, Diane57. You've got such a big heart. That is so sweet. Yeah, my, my, and my Susan, too, has had a rough year. It's been a tough year for people, let me tell you. Oh, Cheryl is here. I love my Cheryl. Cheryl, I'm putting together my blocks, and I still haven't found your block, but I, I am going to find it. <laughs> If not, I'll look at a picture of how you made it and I'll make one to look just like it. Because <laughs> I said, I wonder what I did with that. But I have a couple piles upstairs. You know how you just, I set things in piles and forget where they are. And so I'll keep looking. You, Dora, you got a scrap bag from Pineapple Fabrics. Yay! Isn't that wonderful to get their scrap bags? The fabrics are gorgeous, and there's so much you can do. And, Dora, did you see we showed your dragon, sweetie, in your castle? We were very excited.
Yeah, and Pat, that's right, Pat, even though you didn't get tested, I'm sure you had the COVID too. So bless us that y'all both made it through this, honey. Oh, my gosh. Didn't hurt that you're a nurse, huh? That is wonderful. I'm so happy for you. All right, Bonnie, it was so good seeing you. Yay, and Susan Smith is now officially, she finished her training, and now... I don't know what BOA, but it's like she can do, give advice and do policies or, oh gosh, Susan, tell us what it is. Because I know what it is, but I just, I've lost my words right now. Take care, Miss Bonnie, sweetie. I think it's the Sherry, A-S-H-E-R-R-I-E. Sherry Mercurio is getting ready to move. I, I don't know if Cheryl Lemon's getting ready to move. Unless I missed it all. Boss of all. <laughs> I love it, Vicki. You're so funny. You are so funny. It's so good always to see our Cheryl Lemon. She's our sunshine. Her and Miss Nadine are our sunshine. Oh, we'd love for you to share more, Dora. We love your dragons. They are amazing. Take care, Miss Pat. Y'all are wonderful. I'm just I'm so proud of Susan Smith. Let me tell you, that woman is so smart. And she's had an up and down year with re losing relatives and, and trying to find a new path to a better job. And, oh, my gosh, that girl is amazing. And she becomes invaluable to whoever she works for. So we, we just love all of y'all. You're just so talented. So, oh, so Cheryl is moving. I'm sorry, Cheryl Lemon. I missed it somehow. I'm going to have to email you, girlfriend. I'm sorry for people having to do all the moving. So you're going to go down next week to help with, help with the twins. Homeschooling. Ooh. Oh, good point. And then you'll complete the move later on. Well, maybe that's good in a way. It kind of lets you get your, dip your toes in the water a little bit. And then, because I, I know this is all unsettling. I mean, Miss Bonnie has handled her move amazingly. But moving is a big, it, it, it's a big stressor. Okay, I will definitely, because... I, you know, I listened to what you told me, but I was still tired then. And it's like, I, I know you're amazing, Susan, but I was trying to remember the, how, I, how to say the details. <laughs> I love it. You, that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. I got you. That's wonderful. And we know she'd be lost without you. Michelle Lang, stop by. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, you know, as far as I know, it's down to a tropical storm. I'm just hoping to get some rain out of it. First, they set up to four inches. Now they're saying one to two. But I'll take rain. If I can just get rain, I'll take it. <laughs> you say goodbye. And I say hello. You don't want me to say hello, hello. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, I tell you, they got a lot of people making big changes in their life. I'm just glad you're here and you're part of our family. You don't know how much you all mean to me. I couldn't wait to get back home. We had a little a gypsy chat Friday night where I told the girls all the gory details, <laughs> the wonderful gory details, but uh, you mean so much to me, and when something like that's going on in my life, it's so nice to have quilting sisters to share it with, and you are all part of my family. I appreciate everything that you do. I appreciate that you come spend this time with us, so don't forget next week, we are going to make an official 
journal with a home home painted cover and decorate it and all that good stuff. Oh yes, yeah. You did you like the Beach Boy kind of music? I grew up at Virginia Beach, so I love Beach Boy type music. And you know what? I appreciate the Beatles more now too. They were just a little earlier for me, but. Oh, thank you, Sue Smith. Yeah, I y'all, I love it. I just wanted to come on and teach people how to quilt, and I love that we have made a community right, right here together. We had no idea that this COVID crisis was going to hit, but thank goodness I've had you through all this. I, I would be too lonely without you all. So y'all are amazing. Ah, uh, that's sweet, Susan. Thank you, and I'm so glad you have all of that. I'll, one day, Nadine, I am going to come see you. I'll give you some notice so I don't just show up at your door. But I've got to come see that magic fairyland that you live in. I mean, just beautiful. Just beautiful. So we're all going to meet each other. Right? We're, in the U.S., we're going to try to get together sometime in Missouri or something. We're going to find a way. And uh, when I was in high school, I loved Three Dog Night. I mainly loved Elton John and loved Chicago. I was kind of one of those boring kids, you know? <laughs> yeah, over time, we will meet. Yeah, right now, America can't travel anywhere because we've done such a terrible job of dealing with this crisis. So, mm. Oh, that's so cute. I remember back watching the Ed Sullivan show, my family had this TV that was probably, the screen couldn't have been any bigger than this. Tiny little screen. But boy, did we love watching that. So. Uh, wouldn't it be fun? We'll just all... Well, we'll just all go see Nadine, swim in her pool. Then we'll all go see Diana Wright and swim in her pool. All of us could fit in Diana Wright's pool. Ah, every one of us. <laughs> so. Didn't he, he had so much on. I just, I loved him. And you know, one of the things I loved, because I was this little kid, I loved people that came on doing the spinning plates. I couldn't imagine how they kept all those plates spinning like that. <laughs> ah. oh, oh, Susan Smith. Yes, yes, yeah. Eagles. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I loved all those groups. Well, I am smelling a roast up in the oven. And I've hardly had anything to eat today. So I might say goodbye and go up. And kind of bug the old man and say, hey, is it time for dinner? Because I've been smelling it down here. And I'm going to my doctor this Wednesday, so I'll let you know what they say. The only thing is I reserve the right if I get a little less than stellar report that I've been under stress. And you know what stress does to diabetes. So, But I'm hoping I'm halfway okay because I've been trying. So... Y'all take good care of yourselves. Thank you. Oh, Doobie Brothers. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, oh, my gosh. Y'all are coming up with all the good music. Good, good music. Take good care of yourselves. Stay safe. Wear a mask. We will get through this together. This is a I'm sure we all have our favorite choices. So we, by the time we talk next, I think we'll know. Take good care. Y'all are the best and take great care of yourself. Do something special just for you this week. It's kind of hard when you can't get out of the house. But there's bound to be something you have just wanted to do. Put everything aside one day and just make your heart happy. All right. Take care, everybody. You are all the very, very best. Oh, yes, Chris Christopherson. I remember that. I'll see some of you on Thursday night. The rest of you and, and some of those I'll see next Sunday. So 
journal time next Sunday. Let's see what I come up with. Bye-bye, guys. Take good care. You're the best. You're the best. Bye, Nadine. Have a great vacation. Woo! Bye-bye, guys. See you soon.